Hi and welcome. This video serves as an introduction to delegates and is the first part of a video series on this advanced C-sharp topic. So please consider subscribing and ringing the bell so that you can be notified of future content on C-sharp, advanced topics like this and much more. We'll look at a broad overview of delegates in this video so that we can understand delegates conceptually and we'll also create a very basic example of using delegates in code. My aim is to explain these advanced concepts in a simple way. So what are delegates? A delegate can be described as a type safe function pointer. A variable defined as a delegate is a reference type variable that can hold a reference to a method. In order for a delegate to reference a particular method, the delegate must define parameters with types that match the parameter types contained in the relevant method. The delegate must also define a return type that matches the return type of the relevant method. When a developer instantiates a delegate, the developer can associate its instance with any method with compatible parameters and return type. The developer can invoke or call the method through the delegate instance. Note that variants can be used in delegates, which means that the types defined for the parameter list and the return type of the delegate do not have to match exactly with the relevant method's parameter types and return type. In this video, we'll keep the example simple, but we'll discuss variants in an upcoming video. In the meantime, if you wish to read about variants, you can navigate to this URL. This webpage contains content on both covariance and contravariance. In this video, I'll introduce delegates through a basic example where a delegate can reference a static method and an instance method. We'll also look at multicast delegates, which allows the developer to invoke or call multiple methods through one delegate call. We'll also look at how a delegate can be passed as a parameter to a method and subsequently called within that method. In a later video on delegates, we'll explore how delegates are used for asynchronous callbacks and event handling in C-sharp. We'll learn how we can take advantage of different types of delegates like action, func, and predicate to facilitate callbacks and add flexibility to our code. But let's first look at the basics in this introduction to delegates. So a delegate can reference both static methods and instance methods. Let's first look at how a delegate can reference static methods. Let's say we want to encapsulate functionality that logs text and includes a date timestamp preceding the text. In some situations, we want to have the ability to log the text to the console screen, and in other situations, we want to have the ability to log the text to a text file. So let's define a delegate that can reference a method that does not return a value and accepts one string argument. So to do this, we use the delegate keyword followed by the name of the delegate type we wish to define. Let's name this delegate logdel. So preceding the logdel delegate name, we have included the void keyword. This is because we want this delegate to reference a method that does not return a value. Then after the logdel delegate name, we can include brackets and within the brackets, a list of parameters. So let's include one string parameter and name it text. So this delegate can reference methods that contain one string parameter and do not return a value. Note that we have included our delegate definition within the program class, which means this delegate type can be accessed from anywhere within the program class. We could have included this delegate definition outside the program class and within the delegate basic example namespace. If we wanted to extend the delegate's accessibility to anywhere, within the delegate basic example namespace. In this example, we'll define the delegate scope so that it is accessible from anywhere within the program class and not accessible from outside of the program class. Let's create a static method named log text to screen inside the program class. This static method contains the void keyword, which is used to indicate that the method does not return a value and contains one string parameter named text. The functionality within this method is very basic. We are simply writing the text argument's value to the screen with a date timestamp preceding the value stored in the text argument. You can see that the delegate type we have just defined named logdel contains a definition for a method that does not return a value and contains one string parameter. So the return type and parameter type defined in our delegate named logdel matches the return type and the parameter type in the log text to screen method signature. Let's go to our main method and define a variable as the logdel type. 
We do this by entering the logdel delegate name followed by the variable we'll name logdel, then the equals symbol followed by the new keyword to instantiate an object. We must then follow the new keyword with the name of the logdel delegate type and then pass the name of the method that we want the logdel variable to reference into the logdel types constructor like this. Then to call the method now referenced by the logdel variable, we can simply write the name of the variable that references the delegate and pass in the appropriate parameter to the delegate like you would if you were calling a method. Note you are also able to invoke delegates through the use of the delegate types invoke method like this. But for this example, let's call the delegate without using the invoke method. Okay, so let's make this example slightly more interesting. Let's write code in the main method to prompt the user for the user's name and let's pass the user's input as an argument to the logdel delegate. Let's run the code. And that works as expected. So what happens if we decide to include the date time stamp as a parameter in the log text to screen methods method signature? The C# -sharp compiler automatically complains. This is because the log text to screen method no longer conforms to the logdel delegate definition. So let's change the logdel delegate definition to accommodate a parameter of the date time data type. Right, let's run the code. Great. So that gives us a basic idea of how delegates work. Let's change the code for the log text to screen method and the logdel delegate definition to how it was previously. I.e., let's remove the datetime stamp as a parameter for the logdel delegate definition. And let's also remove the date timestamp parameter from the log text to screen method signature. Let's also update the log text to screen method implementation accordingly. So let's say there is a requirement to log the text to a text file. To implement this functionality, we can simply create a method that doesn't return a value and contains a string parameter. As we now know, this will allow this method to be referenced by a variable defined as the logdel delegate. So let's create a static method named logText to file that contains a string parameter and does not return a value. Let's implement code logic detail that writes the input from the user to a text file. Let's replace the log text to screen method name being passed into the logdel delegate during the construction of the delegate object with the log text to file method name. So our logdel variable is now referencing the log text to file method. So when the logdel delegate is called, this should invoke the log text to file method. Let's see if the user's input has been written to the relevant text file. Right, so let's navigate to where the log file should now have been created, which is the same directory path from where our code is run. And you can see that the user's input has been successfully written to the log file as expected. So we have now proven that we can reference static methods in delegate-defined variables. Let's now prove that delegates can also reference instance methods. Let's create a class named log. Let's move our static methods to the log class. And let's remove the static keyword from their method signatures because we want to test that instance methods can be referenced from delegates.
Let's go to the main method and create an instance of the log type. Let's then pass the instance method named log text to screen into the logdel delegate constructor. Let's test the code. Great, the user's input is logged to the screen as expected. And for good measure, let's also test the log text to file instance method. Excellent. We are also able to call both methods through one delegate call. This can be done through the use of what's known as a multicast delegate. By using a multicast delegate, multiple objects can be assigned to one delegate instance by using the plus operator. Let's define two delegate variables as log del on one line like this. Let's name the first delegate log text to screen del and the second delegate log text to file del. Let's instantiate the first delegate named log text to screen del and ensure that it references the instance method named log text to screen. Let's instantiate the second delegate named log text to file del and ensure that it references the instance method named log text to file. Let's create a multicast delegate named multi log del and assign it a value which is a combination of both the log text to file del variable and the log text to screen del variable. Note that these two delegate variables have been combined through the use of the plus operator. We are now able to call the log text to screen method and the log text to file method through one call to the multi log del delegate. Let's test the code. And the user's input along with the timestamp has been logged to the screen as expected. Let's see if the user's input has been logged to the relevant text file. And it has. Great. And lastly, let's demonstrate how a delegate can be passed as an argument to a method then invoked by the method that receives the delegate argument. Let's create a static method in the program class named log text. This method does not return a value and contains a parameter defined as the log del delegate type. And the log text method will simply serve as a wrapper function for calling the log del delegate, which will be passed as an argument at runtime to the log text method. Let's go to the main method and pass the multi log del delegate as an argument to the log text static method. Let's test the code. So it has logged the user's text to the screen as expected. Let's also check whether the text has been logged to our log file. Excellent. So you could also pass the log text to screen del object or the log text to file del object as an argument to the log text method. So let's do this. Let's first pass the log text to screen del object into the log text method and run the code. Great. And let's also test passing in the log text to file del object. Let's look at the appropriate text file. Excellent. So you can see how delegates can be used to separate design from implementation detail and facilitate flexibility of design in our applications. Please let me know in the comments section whether you have used delegates before in your code. If not, hopefully you will feel confident that you can use them in the future. I hope you have enjoyed this basic introduction to delegates. In the next tutorial, we'll dive deeper into delegates with a more detailed example. If you feel you have gained value from viewing this tutorial, please smash the like button. Please feel free to share a link to this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. Please consider subscribing and ringing the bell so that you'll be notified of future content on advanced C-sharp concepts and more. As always, the code created in this video can be downloaded from GitHub. Please see a link below in the description to the relevant GitHub repository. Thank you and take care.